烫的。Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another season of racing with the middle of the pack racing league or the MPRL. And we are here today to kick off an all new season of racing known as the Spring into F4 Championship for 2024. And well, with spring arriving on the scene, it's the best way to go jumping into an all new season of the year with some Formula 4 racing action. And that's going to be what it's all about in this season of eight weeks of racing. Indeed, last time out, we kicked off 2024 with an absolute highlight of the year you could say already with the GR86 Winter Championship and as we continue our way through the seasons the middle of the pack racing league is back once again with an all new league but going from closed wheel racing to open wheel racing and well it's been some time since we've seen some open wheelers at the middle of the pack racing league in fact I think this is the first ever league on iRacing hosted by middle of the pack racing league that's open wheel format and well where better to host the racing than on the premier sim racing platform available only on PC also this series sponsored by PT Act Trader we'll tell you a little bit more about them later on in today broadcast and we kick off the race today with round one of eight here in the United States of America at the one and only Long Beach Street Circuit. Located in downtown Long Beach in the US state of California, this circuit is perhaps one of the oldest when it comes to road racing in the United States of America. Almost coming to 50 years of age, having hosted its first ever race in what was 1975, it being a Formula 5000 event, and it's gone on to host a whole variety of series. Maybe Formula 5000, Formula 1, or in closed wheel cockpit, ra cockpit racing. It's also got it to host the likes of IMSA and GT3. But regardless of what it's hosted, this circuit has kept one thing at its fundamental course, and there's absolutely brilliant racing with 11 corners all centered around the run down by the beach and also around the local convention center. It is a circuit that's got straight, it's got chicanes, it's got hairpins and sweepers, and therefore it's absolute door to door racing with the walls ever looming close. And all our drivers will be absolutely eager to kick off their championship campaigns with a bang. But as we welcome you all to track side, we should point out this broadcast is live. However, the racing you're seeing is not what the format of the broadcast for this season be post round. And that means the race that occurred earlier this week on what was Wednesday. And to give you the date, Wednesday at the 10th of April 2024, we're bringing it to you as if it were live from Circuit Side this fine Friday, the 12th of April. And what that means in reality is here in the Conti booth, we do not know how any of the action plays out today. Indeed, we've avoided any potential spoilers, whether the practice session that's coming to an end in the background, the upcoming qualifying session, or our two races on the schedule today. And indeed, we're trying to keep it as raw and as close as possible to the raw live experience for you guys and girls at home. And we do ask if you're one of the racers who, chew, who drove on the grid earlier this week, can you please avoid any potential spoilers in our respective broadcast chats. Speaking of which, this broadcast is available both on YouTube and also Twitch. On YouTube, you can be tuned in via TX141 at TX or Paul Walsh on YouTube or on Twitch. And we say hello to you guys and girls on YouTube. We also say hello to you guys and girls on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash TX141. And well, you may be asking, who is TX141? Well, let me choose myself. My name is Paul Walsh, also known as TX141 or Britain a Spit, depending on what media you follow me on. Now we're bringing you all your race and action over the entirety of the season. It's my pleasure to be back once again, covering a middle of the pack racing at league series. And goodness me, dated all the way back to the early stages of 2022. The time goes on. And after two years of racing, it never gets better than this. And our schedule for today, time's in with British Summertime, BST, or you know, so quality time, plus one, UTC plus one. We've got two races upcoming. The first of which, our first sprint race, 20 minutes in duration. We're kicking off at a proxy, what will be 11 minutes time. And then we'll be going straight into our second race of an all new format of racing. We'll tell you a little bit more about that very shortly. And that'll be our second sprint race at what will be approximately 25 to 9 this evening but let's come on to our calendar then for this season ladies and gentlemen and as we can see we have got an absolutely packed calendar two cups of racing that's four rounds apiece and the first four rounds will be under the header of the street fighters cup and well it sounds as though it's all about street racing and you'd be absolutely right in that evaluation because our drivers will be taking on four of the finest street circuits on the north american continent indeed all the circuits our drivers will be taking on will be on the north american continent we start off today at the Long Beach Street Circuit and in a week's time we make our way to Chicago for what is of course the ultimate NASCAR Street Circuit I believe originally envisioned on iRacing and made a reality for a collaborative effort and that will be on the 17th of April and then round number three we'll be making our way to Detroit for the Belle Isle Grand Prix Circuit a circuit that's now been moved on and indeed the Belle Isle Circuit no longer in use but the one key thing on the 24th of April is we're going to see it in reuse and our drivers there are going to be demonstrating just how bumpy it is and also what is considered at one point to be one of the premier circuits in the world before we make way to Canada for the Montreal circuit 
And of course, the circuit, Charles Villeneuve, the hybrid street circuit, with a little bit of flora and fauna, just as much as the walls loom close, and a bit of an odd circuit compared to its rivals, and he will tell you a little bit more about that on the 1st of May. Now, we should point out the first three rounds of this season are in a sprint format. However, the sprint format has been revised for this season compared to previous middle of the pack racing league series, in the fact we now have two races on the calendar in each of those rounds. So when you see sprint, it means you've got two races, two 20-minute races, rather than just the one 30-minute race, and they're going to have a much shorter qualifier session which we'll talk about very shortly. Meanwhile our feature race round is also going to involve a much shorter qualifying session because there will be no qualifying session for our feature race round and instead we're going to be seeing a 50 minute long feature race in round four and also round eight. That's right five zero. The longest races we ever hosted in the middle pack racing at league series and that's going to push our drives to the absolute limit. But we've only talked about our first cup. Let's talk a little bit more about the road racer cup. Rounds five through to eight and there well as it says on the tin it's all about road race and we're going back to the more traditional open road racing circuits where the grass is going to be by the track side and also a little bit of runoff area as well so that way our drivers are not going to be punished as easily compared to the walls of the Street Fighters Cup and as they roar their way into round number five on the 15th of May they'll be heading to the Motorsports Circuit at the Canadian Time Motorsports Park keeping with the theme of staying in Canada and our drivers are going to be taking on the Canadian the Canada's primary circuit when it comes to wheel racing but our drivers then make their way back to the United States of America for a triple header beginning at the Indianapolis Grand Prix Circuit on the 22nd of May and then it'll be our final sprint race round of the season at Sonoma on ways at round number seven on the 29th of May in Northern California, of course. And then we'll be making our way to the US state of Texas while drivers will be doing the two step as they take on the circuit of the Americas for our season finale. And well, the Austin circuit will be playing host for our final feature race round of the season on the 5th of June, where it's an absolutely brilliant calendar ahead. And I think for all the drivers here, they'll be absolutely itching, chomping a bit to get underway. And speaking of our drivers, we can't have a series without our drivers, and we've got 41 entrants this season. Let's give you a quick recap of who they are, starting in the pro class. We've got 10 entrants in the pro class, our premier class, and you will see these guys denoted by the fact that they have blue sashes against their name in the timing towels, and on top of that as well, you'll see the wind mirrors have got a blue tint in them, and well, we're going to be seeing a number of return names. In fact, all the names you see here are returnees, veterans of previous series, including Tanner Dibble for DNA Motorsports, and teammate, what is their Jordan Butler, the 0-72. We've also got the privateers, Logan McKinsey in the number four, Franz Washington in the 18, and Mika Hendricks in the 82, and Ed Redoffer in the 99. But let's not forget as well, Jason Landry, a defending champion from the Winter GR86 Championship, and he's going to be in the Sunday GT Turtles number five, his regular number. We've also got Jaden Calloway in the 37 for ITD West, and we've got in the number 73, Daniel McConnell for Texas Speed Sim Racing, and Rockefeller Racing Esports, Red Melon Harris in the 96. But then we come onto the Prime class, and well, we've got 16 that drives contesting this class. Many of them returnees. We've also got one name, a Hall of Famer returning after a long hiatus. And we've also got a new name on the grid. And let's give you a quick roundup of who is going to be there. We've got Charles Hosey representing Rockefeller Esports Green. And also Aaron Lyle will be representing the same team for what is the 100 and the 147 cars. We've also got Matt Best for Texas Speed at Sim Racing in the Prime Class in the 101. Joe Nagy, one of two drivers for Rockefeller Esports Orange in the triple one there. And he's going to be joined by a teammate, a newcomer to the Miller Pack Racing League Series. And that's going to be at Stacey Bertrand, who'll be in the 152, and we're looking forward to seeing how Stacey gets on today in their debut. We also got Keith Wilfred there in the 184 for Rockefeller Esports Orange in the 184, and well, Jermaine Warren and Fernando Takashi, two privateers, and well, some of you may be thinking, is that Fernando Takashi? Yes, that is he. The Brazilian driver is back in the 123. You lost him on the grid in 2023, and he is back and ready to go once again, and he is the Hall of Famer. We're telling you, Ban, it wouldn't quite be the same if we didn't have Takashi on the grid, and expect him to reignite some absolutely intense and passionate fights. We've also got Adam J. Ballard in the 129 for Rockefeller Esports Purple, and he's going to be the sole purple driver for the team. Head of David Adeyi, the privateer for the 132, and ITD West Julian Jones in the 133. And then looking to the right-hand side column, we've got David Turn for Slipstream Sloss in the 135, and the rest of his teammates in the AM class. We've also got John Croom for Rockefeller Esports Green, who of course partnering up with Charles Hosey. We've also got that Aaron at Law, and all the 145 and 147 drives being followed up by Bertrand, who we talked about only moments ago. Samuel Bernard Hardy returns in the 161 for Rockefeller Esports Red. We've also got the privateer Nick Bader in the 176. And also the privateer Kevin Clark in the 189. And let's not forget Keith Wilfred there, who we talked about a little bit earlier on in the 184. And then coming on to the AM class, last but not least, we are going to be seeing what will be Christopher Holiday leading the way in the 202 for Caboose Crew. With teammate Todd Miller, new to the grid for this season. Indeed, new to the middle of pack racing league. And we wish him all the best on his debut. And we look forward to seeing what he can do. And they've also got third driver Cole Peterson 
Hobie joined them in the 250 for Caboose Crew. And then we come on to what we at Braden. Melling the private hit in the 213. Returning after his debut season last time out in the Winter GR86 Championship. And enjoying the racing there. We're also going to be having Slipstream Soft's Tim Chong. He'll be going up racing with us. And Mark Senegal there with his teammate Roger Ganesh. The other two members of Sunday GT Turtles partnering up with Jason Landry in the Pro Class. But these guys in the M Class in the 227 and the 229. They're always there and looking to put on a good show. We've also got where's Jared Kelly in the 255 return in the privateer and also privateers are 261 and 280 of Jason Seelin and Lee Porter. Kirk Lane and Bill DeCosta form up Team Bear Pope for this season in the 281 and the 283. We've also got Nick Yakubov for Slipstream's Lost in the 288. Glenn Bratton in the 289 the privateer and then we're going to be having none other than Aaron at B with the privateer in the 297 and that is who all your AM drivers will be your 15 entrants there to complete that entry list of 41 drivers. But now coming on to what is our prizes because of course our drivers are going to be key to competing for a plethora prizes and with our sponsor even more prizes have been thrown into the mix well let's firstly start off with our championship prizes these are earned through our drivers fishing positions in the final championship stands over the course of the season and as we can see there the winner of each driver's championship that's overall after eight rounds of racing they will be receiving per class what will be 20 us dollars plus also free pt actual prize PT Actuator prize draw tickets and more on exactly what those prize draw tickets are going to be worth very shortly. We also have there what will be two of those tickets for the runners up in the Drivers Championship and that's across all three classes Pro, Prime and Am and there'll be one extra ticket going to the Drivers who finish third in their respective Drivers Championships but no no monetary prize. Five US dollars will be awarded to our winners of the Street Fighters Cup. That's the leader of the championship standings based on rounds one through to four. And that'll be per class in both the Pro, the Prime, and also the M. And the same will be applying another five US dollars to the winner of the Road Racer Cup. And that's going to be from what will be rounds five through to eight in the championship standings. We also have a 30 US dollar prize. It's not per class, it's overall for the winners of the team's championship once the season is completed. That prize being distributed among the members. And of course, that gives them all the incentive to work together as much as humanly possible. And as we can see, for any driver who has completed at least seven rounds of racing this season, they'll be picking up uh, themselves a PT Actuator prize draw ticket. And also there we can see a 10% discount on a single PT Actuator store order for any driver this season who makes it an instant free season. They pick up zero instant points after completing at least seven of the eight rounds. And well, that is going to be a tough task in these Formula 4 cars. But you can imagine one or two drivers may go all in for it. But we talk about the PT Actuator prize draw because we've got multiple raffle prizes. Prizes up for grabs from our sponsor for this season, PT Actuator. Thank you very much to them for providing prizes for this season. And firstly, it's going to be what will be a 50 US dollar prize there, a raffle draw prize, albeit that is going to be our standard raffle draw prize so that's not put on by PT Actuator but that's going to be based on what will be the entry fees and whatnot. and the middle of pack racing league provides that and it's a one raffle draw prize for all drivers who have completed at least seven rounds of racing over the course of the season, our admins are non-eligible for any of these raffle prizes, but meanwhile from the PT Actuator pool we've got an active belt tensioner and that is going to be for first place in the sponsor prize draw, admins non-eligible and well we can see there 25% discount on a single PT Actuator actuator store order there and that is going to be for the second place finisher in that raffle prize draw and then we can see what will be 20 percent off of an order for a single pt actuator store order for the third place finisher in that prize draw and well we do apologize there for the slight error saying that it's prizes per class and yes with regards to those raffle prize draws in fact it's not and there's only one prize up for grabs in each of those categories but still as we do move on and indeed as we now look ahead to what will be our circuit for today well as we can see we are here at the Long Beach Street Circuit located in downtown Long Beach in the county of Los Angeles in the US state of California and thank you to iRacing for the brilliant circuit map alongside their fantastic simulator and well this circuit is a rather short circuit only 1.96 miles in length and with 11 corners absolutely ram packed into it it's got a little bit of everything it's got the tricky fountain chicane that turns 2 and 3 it's got the sweeping right hand as it turns 4, 5 and the double left that turns 6 and 7 we've got a long back straight connecting corners 8 and 9 and we've also got the excruciatingly tight hip in a turn at number 11. We're going too wide there. It sounds a great idea in practice until you realise just how tight it is and it is a complete 180 degree reversal where if our drivers get it wrong they may find themselves beach in the exit wall if they don't get the steering lock on right. But the key thing around here is keeping it out of the walls and enjoying the race and with that long start finish straight that sees the circuit run parallel to the beach line we're going to expect plenty of drag race battles into turn one and plenty of fighting from corner to corner even into the very tight fountain sequence which you can go too wide but you've got to be very obliging with your rival. 
And then coming onto our rules before we go racing to explain how this sprint race round will work. Firstly, setup wise, drivers are running a fixed setup as provided by the Middle of the Pack Racing League, with fuel loads restricted to 14 litres, and that'll be for both races today. And speaking of those races, they start by a standing grid start, and we can see each driver has one faster pair available in each race. And if they pick up 15 or more instant points in a given race, they'll pick up a drive through penalty. Now, sprint race one shall be set on, based on a closed qualifying session in terms of that grid order, and that qualifying session is just completed, so we're very sure take you to the grid and how all our drivers line up and that was a seven minute closed qualifying session with only two laps available to each and every driver but we're not going to be televising the qualifying and now our second race that it will immediately follow afterwards and the grid order shall be set based on results of race number one but the top 10 positions will be inverted so whoever wins race number one they start p on the grid for race number two the 10th place finish in race one starts on what will be of course excuse me, pole position, and then, well, we're going to be having 11th for all the way down at two at the very back of the order in terms of how they finished in race one. That's how they line up for the purposes of race number two. But without further ado, we head live to circuit side once again, and all of our drivers already started to line up, ladies and gents, but, and well, as they do so, we take a look to the blimp view, and as they get into position, this is how they'll line up on the grid for our first race of the season. It's Jaden Calloway who has taken the opening pole position in the pro class and overall for ITD West, joined on the front row by Jason Landry for Sunday G. Turtles. Behind them, Tanner Dibble for DNA Motorsports and Stacey Bertrand on their debut taking Pro-Am at pole position. Congratulations to the Rockefeller Esports green driver. Well, in fact, orange driver, I should say, they're but green with the tag next to them, indicating their Pro-Am. Julian Jones starts P5 for ITD West, ahead of Charles Hosey for Rockefeller Racing Esports Green. And then behind them, we'll be seeing Kevin Clark, P7, the privateer, ahead of Jordan Butler for DNA Motorsports, with Samuel Bernardi, P9 for Rockefeller Esports Red, for making it P9 and completing at your first five rows of the grid be Milan Harris, who'll be starting there for Rockefeller Esports Red in P10. Edwin Offer starts P11 ahead of Matt Best, who's P12 for Texas Speed Sim Racing. And then behind them on the grid, we're going to have Daniel McConnell and what is Nick Bader line up on the seventh row of the grid, the Texas Speed Sim Racing and the Privateer outfit. Row 8 goes to the Pro and Prime pair, the two Privateers of Franz Washing and Fernando Takahashi. Well, and Jay Baller for Rockefeller Esports Purple, P17 ahead of Carl Peterson, your AM pole sitter for Caboose Crew. And then you've got the AM row of what will be row number 10, Mark Senegal for Sunday GT turtles and jared kelly the privateer p20 todd miller starts p21 on his debut for caboose crew ahead of slipstream slots nick yakubov joe nagy starts p23 for rockefeller esports orange ahead of glenn bratton at p24 the privateer and then we're going to be having on row at number 13 aaron beaver and keith wilfed at the rockefeller esports orange driver who's followed up by jason c lynn at the privateer p27 ahead of roger ganesh for sunday gt turtles on the final through row of the grid it's going to be crystal holiday for caboose crew and logan mckinsey the privateer and then braden at mellon starts p31 last but not least but will be contesting that position and looking to make his way up the order as quickly as humanly possible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the grid is almost set already. And as we look down to circuit side, we're only moments away from going at green flag racing and waiting for two more drives to get into position on the 31 car grid. And well, the grid is set, the lights are going on and well, we're only moments away. And it's lights out and away we go for the first race of the season as we spring into the F4 Championship. And Jalen Calloway gets a brilliant start as they romp their way up towards turn number one. But meanwhile, behind we could already see Tanner Dibble under a degree of pressure from Julian Jones. And Stacey Betrayan getting a box on the neutrals. They make their way down to turn one. And as they go on to the Angus for the first time, Cole Tyres here. Bit of an incident already behind Carl going to the wall. And as all the drives make their way on through the opening corner, I think it was a brush of the wall there while the Rockefeller Esports Red Machines as they make their way into the fountain section. Everyone here having to be sensitive as they all queue up together now. Main the way two by two as Andre Ballard they're fighting car round and that's going to be an instant for the Texas Speed Sim Racing car that's pointing the right direct wrong direction but everyone's going around the scene instant front wing missing there from one driver and we're not quite sure who's lost their front wing but you can tell you that is the combination of ways Matt Best and Andre Ballard have had it all going wrong at turn number three but meanwhile as we look back up the order unfortunately we can't get replays of what happened due to technical limitations with this broadcast format but as our drives make the way on through well, there's been drama early on a near miss there for what was I do believe Julian Jones coming out of turn number eight towards the barrier and was they make the way onwards towards what we turn number nine already Hosey under pressure from Butler as Butler looking for the move can't find it the DNA Motorsports driver pinning Hosey to the inside as they come through nine but remember it switches back into the left hand of a turn number ten and that's going to make it a change in prospects he looks to go round the outside meanwhile Milan Harris is hit the wall at turn number nine going very slow the suspension well, the Rockefeller Esports red car has come to an abrupt end of its life 
and where Harris's race may also be in tears. We'll have to wait and see if we can get that car into the pit line. But as he tries to be on through, no, he will not be able to. And I think that car is going to be marooned. In fact, no, he does get it going again. But it's a bit late in the day now. And therefore, he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to fight his way through the field. But meanwhile, Todd Miller here having a good start getting one place in the M-Class. Four overall, already up to P17. When it's P3 in the M-Class, looking to fight for a podium here for the Boost Crew. He's got the pressure. Jared Kelly behind Kelly. Looks at the inside very late on the brakes there, Kelly. But gets it stopped just in time. Can't in the wrong way. Oh, goodness me. And it's gone wrong for Miller, who's been collected by the Wayward car. And Mark Senegal has got it wrong out of turn one. And Miller in the end, it was looking so good early on. It's all gone too wrong now as the two drivers get themselves back up to speed. And as they do, well, it's going to be Miller. You can see just how annoyed he is at that fact. And the fact that he was able to make so much ground early on, he's now got to redo it all again. But still, he'll take a breather and recognize he's got plenty more racing to go here. We're only two minutes into 20, and therefore, there's plenty of opportunities. But Carl Peterson, meanwhile, you're leading AM driver under pressure on Kelly. He's already made one move in this lap, now looking to make another one. Peterson defending hard to the inside, but it's going to be Kelly around the outside, and Jared Kelly sweeps around to take the AM lead as they make the way down the back straight. But as they do, it looks like Peterson are absolutely going slowly, and well, there's an issue with the car. Alternatively, something with regards to just a bit of confidence being knocked out of his wind, knocked out the window of his sails. Well, either way, it does seem as though there. Kelly right now absolutely storming away as they make the way in towards turn number 11. But meanwhile, I expect a pit stop for Stacey Bertrand, who was at the time in the top three of the prime class. And once Bertrand makes the way on down the pit lane, looks like this could be a potential drive through penalty. And if so, that might be for a skips race start in terms of not going when the lights went green and will Bertrand parking up and going onwards and hopefully that'll be now clear but meanwhile more fighting on going here further down the order for what is to be inside the top 20 Roger Ganesh at the head of this pack albeit missing that front wing as they make the way onwards towards turn number one and as they do it's going to be the battle here between Ganesh and Senegal the two Sunday GT Turtles drivers and we'll love them missing the front wing that's Ganesh meanwhile Senegal up the inside there I don't think they're going to fight each other as Bertrand comes out the pit lane and has to wait of course to rejoin beyond the pit exit line but as they make the way out into turns two and three well right now things are going to calm down for a brief moment Todd Miller immediately on the attack once again as we ride on board with a caboose crew driver as he heads into turn number four as he goes up through the right hander and all the way through in towards turn at number five a bit of a slip oh goodness me it's gone wrong and Miller finds himself once again in the wrong place at the wrong time as the car goes around there for what is Holiday Holiday does in the end get it out of the way and Miller's able to push on but you've got to feel for the 210 driver for the simple reason that's twice now in the space of two laps where he's had a driver in front of him get it wrong and he's just been in the wrong place to almost be collected if not be collected by them but meanwhile as we look back up towards the what is the bottom end of the top ten when it's Fernando Tagashi right now under pressure Edwin Nofre and well the thing we always like to say about the pro driver Nofre is he's a bit of a silent but deadly character in the fact that he finds a way to very gradually gain places in the race no matter where he starts on the grid and he's doing exactly that as he looks to move a P10 here going in towards the opening corner around the outside of Tagashi Ben here Tagashi goes a bit too deep and then Nofre ends up going into the scene in the instant and with that picking up damage to the front of the car and where it seems to be all together but Fernando Tagashi meanwhile that is going to be a wound for the returning driver as he makes one you can see the front right suspension's gone and that is going to be a toe to the pits but meanwhile from toes to the pits there are right now drivers battling to be in the toe as we see Jason Seedling stepping aside under blue flags this is Samuel Bernardi ahead of that Kevin Clark and Bernardi right now in starting P5 in the prime class pushing upwards and onwards as he makes his way out turn number 8 his next target is class leader Charles Hulsey is P4 as they make the way on it down the back straight and onwards towards turn number 9 they go the 5 minutes of the race complete we've still got the best part of 15 plus the final lap and already it has been an absolute dramatic start to the race near at Long Beach. There's still plenty more to come, I'm certain of that. And Wurz Bernardi makes his way on through turn number 10 in towards 11. Let's give you a recap of the field as they make the way onto the lap. One is here, number five. Well, Jaden Calloway leads after four laps of racing ahead of Jason Landry and Tanner Dill just behind Landry completes your top three of pros. We then have your prime leader of Wales, Charles Holsey for Rockefeller Esports Green in P4 ahead of Samuel Bernardi, three seconds behind P5. Kevin Clark, P6, that completes your top three of the prime. P7 is Francois Schink, the pro chasing after them with Daniel McConnell just behind. Nick Bader is P9. Meanwhile, P10, Edwin Offer into the pits after the damage picked up only moments ago in the instant we did see. Oh, goodness me, it's got very wrong there. And that is Daniel McConnell 
who has made haste to the barrier on the exit of turn number one. I think the rear tyre just clipped the tyre barrier and the Texas Speed Sim Racer drive waiting to get the car to turn around. But this is painful in the fact he's pointing the wrong way and there's a toe to the pits here for Daniel McConnell. And the race is all in tears for the Texas Speed Sim Racing driver. And well, that means now we keep Wilfred Meads up to P10. But meanwhile, just ahead of him, this is now your AM leader, Carl Peterson, who's P9, the Caboose Crew driver right now in a world of his own. And what is this significant is the fact if you're uninitiating the ways of the NPRL series, points are scored first and foremost in overall finishing position, not class position. And that means you want to get as high in the finishing order as possible. And for Carl Peterson right now, this is going to be a huge set of points to kick off his championship campaign. Remember, there are two races today, of course, but the point being the 250 driver right now is in a very strange position. We don't normally see AMS inside the top 10, at least not in the season opener, but Peterson's going to buck the trend today. But meanwhile, speaking of tries, continuing a classic trend of battling action in the AM class, which is Roger Ganesh, who's just been passed by Todd Miller and Miller up to P4 as they come out to turn six and seven and through the right hander at turn number eight. And as they draw the way on down the back straight here, it looks like the 229 driver right now, despite the fact he's missing his front wing, he's not going to come into the pits and get it repaired. He's insistent, I think, that he doesn't want to try and do any repair work and will hook and fault him if he feels that he's very comfortable in the car. But I suspect that's going to be dragging down the straight somewhat and that might be costing him a lot of time in the longer term. More we'll have to wait and see as he makes his way on through turn at number 11. But as he does so, meanwhile, Tanner Dibb will start to be closed up more and more by Jason Landry as we ride on board and look back from the rear of the DNA Motorsports driver's car and well here a wonderful camera shot gives you a sense of perspective of how wide these cars are versus the streets and also the speed and how close they get to the wall with Landry there I thought that was a kiss to the wall with the rear left tire it wasn't to be as he's in the draft now did we're going to fence in the middle of the road he's going to make Landry look the long way around it and well the Sunday GT Turtles drive is anything but a slow turtle right now the DNA Motorsports driver's got it in his blood and indeed with his genetics to say he's not going to let Landry throw in the double zero car as well, he comes on through turn at number 11 of course full steering lock on there these formula four cars they've got a lot of lock on them but even so the drivers will be dragging the car through the hairpin as they make their way onto the start for the straight once again and Jaden Callaway in the 37 right now is absolutely storming clear of this battle but to be fair he might be five seconds up the road but here's where the action is right now and Callaway will just be hoping it's a quiet race at this point onwards and he can bring home that result but meanwhile Dibble will be hoping he can somehow shake Landry well given the form of rivalry between these two indeed you've got to look back to pretty much every middle of the pack race in league season where at some point there's been some absolutely brilliant battles between this pair it's going to be anything but quiet for at least the next few minutes we reckon as they make the way on towards turn number five but as they do so coming on through the right hand a well more happening further down the field top miller continues to chase after nick yakubov off camera at the moment for p13 we'll try and get you a perspective of that very shortly and still we're getting very close to the inside wall they're coming through turn six on to seven and as he goes wide out of seven down towards eight was that an element of oversteer I saw there from Dill as he tried to get the power down the bumps in the road of course unsettling these cars very easily they ride very low to the ground on the top of that as well it just takes a little knock to the rear suspension and they end up coming very loose on the rear end not like the radicals to be fair those machines of course that we saw pilots in 2023 which caught out many a driver with 160 horsepower and what is only 550 kilograms of mass here our drivers are driving a very underpowered car you could say but when you consider the weight of the car well, it very quickly switches on when you put that throttle pedal down and when we did see Jason Landry there experienced a little bit of oversteer he made his way out of the hairpin trying to get that throttle buried in but in the end as they make the way down the start for the straight this time you can see the damage done in the fact that gap has opened up to seven tenths at the start of the straight and we'll now Landry trying to get back at the toe to close but the gap back up as they head in towards turn one for the eighth time of asking but meanwhile, we now look back to Nick Yakubov here and also Top Miller as Yakubov getting a poor run coming out of what is turn number eight as they make the way on down the back straight. And just in front, that's Mark Senegal, the Sunday GT Turtles P2 AM driver as they head in towards turn number nine. We can have a freeway fight on our hands here for what is the run-up spot in the AM class with Carl Peterson, the best part of 10 seconds up the road. I think it might be the accolade now of who's the best of the rest when you're not named Peterson as they head through turn at number 11 and see them. Mark Senegal very close to the inside wall. In fact, I think he might have grazed it given the way we did see our Marshall step back from the board there as they make the wound down but as they do our drivers piling on at the speed here as they roar their way onwards and we jump on board the front wing of Todd Miller's car as he heads up towards turn at number one but it's Yakubov looking up the inside of Senegal and Senegal struggling for speed as you can see Miller taking a look around the outside but Senegal covering him and off and I think there might have been some contact with that inside barrier at turn number 11 for Senegal because the car going very slowly down the straight towards the end there into the braking zone and we thought he would have been safe from that but Miller right now not quite able to capitalise as they head off through turn at number four, but they roar their way on through the double right hand.
and complex. And now to left-handers again. You can see they're just twitchy this going from Senegal's car. Not quite in the state he wants it to be right now. And I think Miller at this point is thinking it's a question of when, not if he can look for that move. As we do briefly have the camera cut in and out there. We do apologise for that on the feed. But he heads in towards turn number eight right now. These tries absolutely knows the tail. Oh, goodness me. And there, a bit of an error from Senegal. And Miller had to react and almost make it a third time of asking in terms of coming up behind the driver who's made an error and being collected by it. But Miller right now looking to the inside as they head into towards turn number nine. On the inside he goes on the brakes initially. Yep, but it's going to be two wide as they make the way into turn 10. So he's going to have the inside for a 10. There's not really going to be an opportunity for Miller because if he goes into the inside of 11, he's then going to have one of the tightest turns of his life. And as they make the way out of the corner, Mark Segal going ultimately defensive. Meanwhile, whilst all this is playing out, the battle for P2 in the pro class and overall is starting to build up a notch once again as this is Dibble versus Landry. Well, Landry was calling it off for a couple laps now going back on the offensive and he's got himself alongside into turn number nine and will they make it too wide as well into ten with so Landry here is going to do it the long way round through ten and he goes all the way around the outside Dibble's trying to stay there Landry ahead by a nose now and onto the brakes they go and gets it done but meanwhile I'm hearing in my ear there's been an instant for ways Keith Wilfred and Carl Peterson and well Carl Peterson is out of the lead at the AM class we haven't quite seen it on camera but as I understand it the two of them have had a coming together and suddenly this man Nick Yakubov the slipstream slot driver is your AM leader with Mark Senegal behind and Todd Miller a bit further back and well that is huge and I believe Miller's have also been involved in the spin at some degree at some point off camera but the key point being here now is that these three of which Jakubov, Senegal and Miller are fighting for the win in the AM class and Jakubov once again finds himself on course for potentially his first win of the season much like in the GR86 championship and it is completely through circumstance and consistency but meanwhile consistency is the key as our drivers battle one another roaring the way on through turn number five and this is the fight right now for what is I do believe P2 in the prime class as the Dibble what is the Dibble Landry battle has moved ahead of Jaden Calloway and well off camera something's happened to Jaden Calloway I think in fact it's been a spin of some description has been down to P3 from the lead for IT West and that is a surprise not a welcome one to be sure in fact we take a look at Jaden Calloway as he tries to get the car down the start not down the start finish straight down the back straight that car is crabbing it's not pointing a straight line when he tries to get the steering wheel straight so Calloway I think it's had more than a spin. I get the feeling that it might be a brush with all. Perhaps we have a car that's a lap down. But Callaway struggling here as he goes through turn 10 into 11. Can he get this car into the pit lane? Get it repaired and back out. He's got a faster but He's going to do so. So he safely makes it on in. But for Jaden Callaway, this is going to be a heart in mouth moment for the simple reason. He looked to be in control. And well, that control has been taken from him. But I mean, well, as we look here to Samuel Bernardi. The Rockefeller Esports Red Driver as he roars his way onto another lap. Six and a half minutes left on the clock here as he heads down towards turn number one. He's battling for P2 in the prime class. He holds the set position. Kevin Clark just behind, and then we've got Francois Sheik, the pro driver, who's P3 pro right now and is on the back of all this. And as they make the way in towards the fountain section, right into left, they go on the exit. Bernardi right now under huge pressure. I can tell you one thing it may look as though he's got a comfortable advantage being the lead car in this train of fray, but you do not want another car behind behind you around the street circuit for the simple reason in these Formula 4 cars you've seen how strong the toe is on the straights ladies and gentlemen and well going through the fountain section the only thing you want on your mind is nailing your apexes and not brushing the wall you don't want to be thinking about what's lurking in your rear view mirror and once they make the way through turn at number 8 these three drives right now started to close up behind Charles Holsey in fact that gap is coming down little by little and Holsey meanwhile the leading prime driver whose potential course to be on the overall podium and well as he roars his way on down meanwhile Milan Harris looking around what will be at the inside going to turn one versus Nick Yakubov, the AM leader and Yakubov going for the switchback cut back there coming out of turn one not quite able to find it but then again he doesn't really need to fight for it given the rate of attrition in fact we have only got 14 cars now on the lead lap still out of 31 starters we've had three retirees as well this has really been a race where many have fallen by the wayside and well with that in mind I think many a driver at this point will just want to get the car home let alone push on and remember this is only the first race of two in the first round of eight we've got plenty more races to go and well I think everyone's still getting themselves acclimatised to the Formula 4 as well did a very different format of car compared to what they used to but meanwhile as we look for Milan Harris back to your race leader Jason Landry for Sunday GT Turtles Tanner Dibble there with him and well this battle taking even more significance now it's no longer the P2 overall it is for the win today as they make the way on through turn 6 and 7 onwards towards 8 they go and when well, they've got a bit of travel in front but that's only going to help Landry for the fact Aaron Beaver in front of him will be able to use the tow of what will be at the P25 car in the number 
excuse me, in the 297 for Bieber. And as they roll their way down towards turn number nine, well, for Landry, it'll buy him a lifeline. But he also knows he's going to have to be very tactical when he looks to find his way past Bieber and try to find a way to do so, where he can use Bieber as a little bit of a speed bump in the road for Dibble. And that's always the way you want to try and do it on strategy where possible using the other car. But Bieber there sees the blue flags waving and pulls into the pits. Well, I think Bieber might have a bit of an issue with the car, perhaps. And that's what's caused him to cover it in. But I think he might have also been off racing line to steer clear. We've also got coming into the pit lane. I do believe that was Roger Ganesh who's three laps down. So something's gone wrong for Ganesh. Perhaps more contact with one of the barriers. But as our leaders make the way in towards turn number one. Meanwhile, we look back from them to Kevin Clark. Right now, the Haas privateer making his way on down towards turn number one here and in a position that Gene has to be proud of. But can he find another place to go all the way in for what would be P2 in the prime class and P4 overall was well, they make the way on through the fountain? Clark will look in the fast of the two drivers here as we jump on board in the car. And as we sit over the top of the driver, the gyro camera rocking around in relation to the motion of the car. Not many maps, not many laps left of racing. Another two laps after this one, but Clark now started to put the pressure on here. You see, hold into the inside into turn six trying to get into Bernardi's head trying to say to him I'm going to need to go for it we're well, going to have to see and that's what you want to do now when you're this close you've got to start playing those mind games because you know you're very close to being equal to your rival in front you technically oh goodness me I was going to say you've got a bit of a pace advantage well if you hit the wall like that you're not going to have a pace advantage for much longer and will that look like a light brush but remember these cars they're very light and their suspensions are incredibly sensitive and will Clark there I've been getting away with it this time but he won't want to repeat that in a hurry as they make the way on through turn number 10 in towards 11. But coming on down to the braking zone, meanwhile, as they get incredibly close, we look to Todd Miller. And, well, this man has done more overtaking than most today for Caboose Crew, and he's still over the back. And Mark Stengel for P2 in the AM class, and keeping in mind that Nick Yakubov is four seconds up the road from these two. Right now, Miller just eager to get on through, but he's got behind him Adam J. Ballou, who's trying to unlap himself from P20. And we can understand the frustration as we've got a car going slowly. That is Christopher Holiday, I do believe, who who's limping along on the inside with the blue flags waving for all the drivers as they make the way on around. That's going to be a place at games there where we Adam J. Ballard up to P19. And we'll also hear Miller looking on the inside in turn eight. Side by side with Senegal. Senegal almost going to the wall there. Is that going to be a track race down the back straight? And Todd Miller pouncing at the right time, getting the nose ahead here. I think this is only going one way in the battle for P2 in the AM class. And it's going the way of the Caboose crew driver. Or is it Senegal looks to the outside? Can he make it too wide into turn 10? He's going to try and commit to it here. Miller, meanwhile, Stay on the outside line. It's going to be a lot of understeer as he comes on around onto the brakes. He goes to Miller, very tight to the apex entry, gets his stops in time. It's a lovely move from Todd Miller to take P2 in AM, and at the perfect time as well as our leaders are onto the penultimate lap of racing. And right now, these two have got another two laps to go. In fact, our leaders are onto, I do believe, a penultimate lap very shortly. In fact, the final lap very shortly. But here comes what will be looking up the inside. None other than I do believe that is going to be Adam Ballard to overtake Mark Senegal and unlap himself. And Miller's going to be given all the breathing room in the world. But meanwhile, looking back to the leaders, we've had a change of lead. And Tanner Dibble has found his way back ahead of Jason Landry. And this is the final lap between the two. Pro oh, my goodness. And well, that final lap has come to an abrupt halt as Dibble's gone to the wall at turn one. And Jason Landry picks up the pieces. And well, the pressure was absolutely absolutely mammoth and in the end it became too much for a DNA motorsports driver and Landry now with eight seconds to Charles Holsey he's just got to keep it out of the wall it's easier said than done clearly we've seen that time and time again but it's a dramatic turn of results and Charles Holsey, Charles Holsey right now your leading prime driver he's also going to be on course to potentially pick up P2 overall with Samuel Bernardi just behind and Rockefeller Esports right now are on course for a huge huge result across their teams but Bernardi here I think wants a little bit more as he tries to look for a move versus his teammate but in the end he won't be able to they're for sister teams of course therefore they are allowed to fight and we love to see the fighting meanwhile a little bit of fight here Jared Kelly up the inside of Jason Linden to turn one to take P4 in the AM class but as we look from them back towards your race leader ladies and gentlemen well, it's been an incredibly dramatic start to the season but for Jason Landry it's been another day in the office because the Sunday GT Turtles driver heads the line here's your winner for the first race of the day here at Long Beach pro and overall ahead of Charles Holsey by eight and a half seconds who for Rockefeller Esports Green will take P2 overall and the win in the Prime Class. Samuel Bernardi completes the overall podium there. P2 in the Prime Class, P3 overall. Franz Washington, Jaden Calloway just behind. Nick Bader, meanwhile, has got some way to go, as has, I do believe, Jaden Calloway, in fact. 
as the ITD West driver who had to pit after instant from the lead, he will come on home P5 in the end, third place in the pro class. It'll be a frustrating end to his day, but still he'll keep his head up and know there's more racing to come. Nick Vader comes on home P6 in the end to take the final spot on the prime podium, the privateer, and a solid start to his season after taking, of course, the AM crown in the GR86 Championship earlier this year. We've then got Kevin Clark coming out of the final quarter very shortly, and they're following it on behind while the drivers is a lap down to take P7 overall, and as they make their way in towards the timing line here. Kevin Clark ends his race on a high. It'll be then Melan Harris in the rear of your picture taking P8 for Rockefeller Esports Red. And then Joe Nagy comes up through for P9. A good start to his season for Rockefeller Esports Orange with Nick Yakubov taking the AM win for Slipstream Slavs. All he had to do was get the car home and he's done exactly that. And behind him, P11 best the rest is Caboose Cruz, Todd Miller who on his debut takes the run-up spot in the AM class. Head of Matt Best, P12 and Mark Senegal will come on through to be your final lead lap finish. In fact, he was a finisher a lap down the end, but he takes third place in the AM class. Well, goodness me, ladies and gents, what a race. And we have got two minutes before our next race. You know what that means? It's time for us to give you a quick recap of those race results from our first race of the day. And as we can see, after 20 minutes of racing, Jason Landry taking the win for Sunday GT Turtles by 8.6 seconds over Charles Holsey for Rockefeller Esports Green. Your pro winner just ahead of the prime winner and Samuel Bernardi completing your overall podium for Rockefeller Esports Red and runner up in the prime class. Franz Oshink P4 the privateer ahead of Jaden Calloway for ITD West with Nick Bader P6 the privateer ahead of Kevin Clark to round off the prime podium that was Halsey, Bernardi and Bader and of course a shout out to our pro podium finishers of Landry, Schink and Calloway. Kevin Clark missing out on any podiums but still taking a P7 there the privateer ahead of Milan Harris with the Rockefeller Esports Red driver ahead of the Orange sister teams Joe Nagy and then we can see Tanner Dibble completing your top 10 for DNA Motorsports. Nick Yak above your AM class win at P11 for Slipstream Sloss ahead of the Caboose Cruise Todd Miller runner up in the AM class this debut he can't complain about that and then at Matt Best P13 for Texas Speed Sim Racing ahead of Mark Senegal who did in the end finish a lap down for Sunday GT Turtles but completed your AM podium Head went off for P15, head of Jared Kelly, with it was Jason at Lynn and Cole Peterson to P18, and a mention to the Caboose Crew driver Peterson, who was leading the AM class until it all went wrong. And then as we come on to the conclusion of Top 20, Adam J. Ballard and Glenn Bratton, with Bratton two laps down. The same for Christopher Holiday, Fernando Takahashi, and Keith Wilfred. Then P24, Julian D Jones, three laps down, alongside Jordan Butler and Aaron Beaver. Five laps down to Roger Ganesh, and well, he'll be your last classified finisher, as you need to finish within five laps of the leader to be classified as a finisher in the NPRL series. Six laps down to Braden at Melling the Privateer. And then we can see also non finishes for Daniel McConnell, Stacey Bertrand, and Logan McKinsey. And well, ladies and gentlemen, we have got another race coming up in very short order. Indeed, we've only got five seconds to go before we head to the grid once again for our second race of the day. And we'll walk you through that top 10 at reversal of the grid as well. That as the checker flag waves on this practice session, we're going to get a very quick sip of water. So as the drivers make their way onto the grid for the second time today, well, this is how they're going to be lining up as they make their way into position. Unfortunately, we can't walk you directly through the grid due to limitations of the replay file, but we can tell you it is Tanner Dibble and Joe Nagy on your front row, with Milan Harris and Kevin Clark on row number two. Nick Bader and Jaden Calais line up on row three ahead of Franz Washington and Samuel Bernardi, with the top ten being completed by Charles Holsey and Jason Landry. And then on row number six is Nick Yakubov and Todd Miller ahead of Matt Best and Mark Senegal, with 15th place going to Edwin Offret ahead of Jared Kelly, there's Jason Seelan and Carl Peterson on row number nine. And then we'll be followed up to complete your top 20 by Adam J. Ballard and Glenn Bratton. Further down the order, starting P21, is Christopher Holiday ahead of Fernando Takahashi, with row number 12 going to Keith Wilfred and Julian Jones. Jordan Butler starts P25 ahead of Aaron at Beaver. And then we do have Roger Ganesh and Braden Menon on row 14, with row 15 going to Daniel McConnell and Stacey Bertran. And Logan McKenzie will be starting, last but not least, P31. After a difficult start to his day, more racing to come. The grid is set, ladies and gentlemen, and all the drives in position. The lights are going on. 
it's lights out and away we go for our second race of the day as the drivers roar away and Multana Dibble makes his way up the gears in towards turn number one it's a clean start from many as they make their way in towards the opening braking zone and once they come on down in towards the opening corner it's going to be four wide behind as they one contesting position here Joe Nay meanwhile right on the inside with the apex there as he defends off Kevin Clark and Jalen Calloway trying to get into the mix but they seem to also by the opening quarter so far at least inside this top 10 as they make their way on through the fountain sequence and Jalen Calloway absolutely charging right now he's like a hornet in what is the nest of human beings at the moment in fact he's looking to sting his way past everyone he can but the ITD West driver eager to make an impression here after what was a display to race number one and while they make their way in towards turn number six you can already see Tanner Dill will run away two seconds clear as Nagy and Clark are stumbling over one another right now the two leading prime drivers and it's Calloway who just wants to find his way through but he won't be able to add his time as meanwhile further down the order Adam Ballard battling with Jordan Butler and Jason Lynn as Lynn under some pressure from Butler Butler around the outside Lynn on the inside and then they go very slow there the privateer and in the end not having the space to really operate with and that's going to cost him even more speed as he heads on down the back straight and well it's a long way to go down the straight and he's going to be having Adam Ballard and also Keith Wilfred make moves around the outside Fernando Takashi also tries to go for the move here and in the end Brazilian driver gets it done as they make their way through turn number nine in towards ten but meanwhile there's drama at the hairpin there's a car around that's before the hairpin there's also a car pointing the wrong way that is Samuel Bernardi I believe who's pointing the wrong way alongside what was the pairing there of I do believe Todd Miller in fact that's not Todd Miller that's Nick Yakubov and we've also got Todd Miller just just behind now regain his senses so it's drama for two ams and a pro am and uh, where's the entry into turn number 11 but meanwhile after one lap of racing it is Tanner Dibble who leads ahead of Joe Nagy P2 followed by Jaden Calloway P3 Kevin Clark P4 Milan Harris P5 Franz Washington P6 Jason Landry P7 Nick Bader P8 ahead of Charles Halsey P9 and your am leader Mark Single P10 with best the rest behind him being P2 and driver Jared Kelly and was they make the way on out of turn number five up towards six more battling going on ahead here as this Jaden Calloway around the outside Joe Nagy at turn 6 and 7 he's finding grip everywhere but it's going to be free wide over the rise and down into turn of 8 but Calloway gets it just in time and doesn't have to worry about a rebuttal from Nagy meanwhile Nagy's got the pressure of Kevin Clark car around in the rear of the picture and that is Charles Holsey who's gone around at turn at number 8 but Calloway's under pressure we stay with this fight as they make the way into towards turn number 9 too wide under braking and meanwhile Nagy trying to look around the outside he may be a prime drive he's been trying to put a pro performance but Kevin Clark says can I do too as they make the way on through turn number number 11 onto the brakes they go and Clark's there contact between the two of them that's going to collect Clark on the rebound and as he makes it out the corner that was a near call for all of them meanwhile Jason Landry trying to steal where clear of the danger puts himself almost to the wall in fact in order to do so and as they power the way on through that's Franz Washing in the Jordan livery who right now making the way almost towards turn number one I'm getting flashbacks to Eddie Jordan and what's the 90s Formula 1 era at this point it shows how old I'm getting as they make the way towards turn number one and as they do onto the brakes the privateer here in P5 holding on ahead of Jason Landry and well if you're looking for a stubborn driver who doesn't give in look no further Franz Washington is one of the best defensive drivers out there and Jason Landry right now is going to have to find a very quick way past because the longer he stays behind the number 18 driver he could see what is none other and Harris, Callaway, and Dibble just run away. Me on the rear of the picture, and that is an error, I believe, from what is there, Kevin Clark. As Mark Senegal comes on through to take with P7, the AM leader, picking up another place. Meanwhile, as they make the way for turn six and seven for Keith Wilfred, he's now on the back of Fernando Takahashi. There's more fighting going on as they make the way through turn six and up towards eight, and Wilfred on the charge here. As meanwhile, we've also got more battling as Crystal Holiday going slowly out of turn number five and losing a place to Aaron Beaver, who sweeps around the outside for Rockefeller racing at green as they make the way over the crest and down into turn 8 here comes Matt Best as well and Best looking for a move in the 101 up the inside of the 202 and we'll gain in another position up to Peach on for protection speed sim racing it's happening at left right and centre wherever you look we've also got some fighting further up the run in towards turn in number 9 that's Julian Jones up the inside of Carl Peterson the third place and drive being overtaken by the 8th place prime driver now as they make the way on around 10 and in towards 11 but this is outside the top 10 and meanwhile inside the top 10 this is Jared Kelly P8 who's aimed to fend Edwin Offred, the pro driver trying to look his way out the inside of the second place AM driver, goes on the brakes into turn number one, a traditional pass there I think Kelly more folks have chased after Mark Cynical and not really getting involved at this time as they head on through the fountain section but as they do, Kevin Clark, meanwhile I think would like to politely get past Kelly but I think Kelly might have other ideas here as they head through turn number four, into five they go and well, we've still got a long way to go a long journey left in this second race of the day and when the drivers head up towards turn number six, 
Well, right now, I think everyone will be calming down for a brief moment before you see the storm of battling occur once again. And speaking of a potential storm, oh my good lord! And that's gone very, very wrong. Extremely wrong for Joe Nagy as we jump on board, going for return number eight. And in the end, Jason Landry coming to the scene the instant. Oh, is there another driver in the form of, well, we couldn't quite discern who, but Nagy's had to be towed to the pits. And that was an error coming out of turn number eight. And with the speed that everyone was running behind, immediately going wrong. And Jason Landry's race is in tatters. He's going to try and limp the car to the it's not to lose a lap, but Jason Landry most likely will not be making it two out of two here today after his win in race number one. Edwin Offering now moves up to P5 overall. Franz Oshink's into the pit lane. I believe he was the other driver involved in that instance. So that's going to bring Edwin Offering up into P4. And suddenly, Jared Kelly, who's past Mark Senegal also on that lap off camera, your AM leader, is now P5. If he brings this home, this will be a record set for the highest ever AM finishing position in an NPRL series. And Jared Kelly could be on course and making history here as me, Mon, Nick Vader and Kevin Clark fighting one another and this is the fight for the prime lead behind the AM lead battle and where everything's out of sorts the two more drivers get it wrong and that is I believe what is Roger Ganesh getting it wrong coming out of the fountain and with it as well one of the other drivers the forward Kevin Clark who was at the time battling with it made of the lead of the prime class you can't make this up it's absolute catastrophe for Kevin Clark and it made it right now finds himself in a very familiar position in terms of leading up front but the problem is he's got Alan Ballard not too far behind and Ballard would like a shot at this move no doubt about it. But meanwhile, we look outside the top 10, and this is Aaron Beaver chasing after Carl Peterson. And Peterson, who was at a comfortable advantage in the first race of the day, looking to try and gain more places. They made the way out of turn six and seven, but Beaver's going to have a shot here as they make the way over the rise three wide down into turn number eight. Peterson on the inside. Meanwhile, going around the outside, it's a two for one special here. Matt Best tools as though at least that was the offer he was told. But will he be able to land the offer when he hits the checkout down the back straight? Yes, he will, as it's Peterson who tucks in behind. And will the Amdry losing two places at the price to one as they head into the breakers over turn number nine but meanwhile in another instant we've got cars in the wall and I think that is two members of what is Rockefeller Esports coming together into turn number 11 and I believe that's Charles Hosey and Adam J Ballard who both had to come in to get under breaking into what was the hairpin and with that that means your leaders of the prime class are now out of contention and Fernando Takahashi finds himself leading the prime class here on what is Oh, goodness me, and a P6 overall on lap number six. And, well, at any moment, if I say a driver's in the lead, they seem to be cursed to fall out of it. So, in the end, I shouldn't say anything, but I'm going to have to, because that's why I'm commentating this race. But the Brazilian driver right now finds himself in a very, very elusive position, it would seem. Whoever touches the lead of the prime class will very soon lose it. Keith Wilfred just buying looks on for Rockefeller East Watts Orange as he goes on the attack in Cobra, who turns six and seven, nine. And the prime lead is just around the corner. Should he be able to chase it down? But, me, while we look to Samuel Bernardi as he comes through turn six and seven here and well in a bit of a karma scenario at the moment for the Rockefeller Esports red driver on the back was Nick Vader and looking for an opportunity to go on the attack as we ride on board the front wing of the 161 drivers he makes his way on down the back straight staying in the toe and we can see just how much speed he gains he sweeps back to the outside and will Vader defense the inside as they make the way into the corner and I think this is going to be a two wide move as they make the way on through turn 10 Bernardi outside to inside it's giving you a textbook example of how it's done through turns nine and ten Bader trying to stay with him, but in the end, only one drive is going to get it done. And Samuel Bernardi with a lovely move there as they make their way on down the back, oh, down the start of the straight. And you're completely correct, the Z of the YouTube chat. Commentator's curse seems to be absolutely all over the shop today with regards to the race. Still, we say hello to you, plus also in the YouTube chat, Jason Landry. We also do have there Samuel Bernardi and a few other members of the chat. Sorry, we haven't caught you all, including, including Shaji at Zuhair. And well, so happy to see so many of you tuning in today as our drives roar their way on around long beach we still got 11 minutes plus the final lap to go and will anything is possible at this point but the battling does seem to be calming down a little bit at this moment in time as we do look at Matt Best here the Texas Speed Sim Racing driver P6 in prime right now trying to find a little bit more momentum out here but it does seem as though those walls are looming large we saw him brush with the wall out of four not quite out of five but the pro and driver here definitely not in his comfort zone I think might be hoping that next week's circuit is going to favor him a little bit more at Chicago as he comes out and over the rise of turn number seven in towards eight. Well, meanwhile, further down the order, Jason Landry now on a recovery drive, of course. 
after that huge shunt we saw at turn eight much earlier on in the race and with Sunday GT Turtles driving its next target is Francois Schinkel with seven seconds up the road and well we have had three retirements in this race so far Braden Melling, Logan McKenzie and Daniel McConnell well in fact more than three retirements I should say we've also had the two extra ones we had five in total over uh, Kevin Clark who was leading the Prime Class only laps ago and also with his Stacey Bertrand once our drivers push on here definitely a huge learning experience today for many with regards to the FIA F4 machine and well as we look back up to Milan Harris third place pro drive third place overall as well he's currently ahead of Edwin Offre who is closing the gap down to six tenths at this time as they come out to turn up five on as they go to a six seven and I think Harris at this point will be keeping an eye on his rear view mirror as we ride on board and look back from the rear of the Rockefeller Esports red machine and he'll be asking himself the question do I need to fight this or can I just simply hold on I think the answer is the former rather than the latter for the simple reason Onofre now it's closing hand over fist from quarter to corner as they roar their way up towards turn number nine as they made their way down towards the breaking zone one thing we haven't really talked about today is the level of tire degradation that our drives will be experiencing as Harris there in a fight with understeer on entry into the apex you can see the car not wanting to comply on turning and as he makes his way to turn it number 11 Harris is going to be parking the proverbial bus in terms of that hairpin I think Onofre would love to get on through and go charging after Callaway who is 13 seconds up the road your leaders your top two 13 seconds clear this battle for P3 but coming back to that tire wear quotient as well normally the tires these machines do last quite a sizable period of time. They should be relatively comfortable over the 20 minutes. Although saying that, as we do see an offer looking around the outside here into turn one, I think right now with the amount of battling that's going on, it might be a bit more tired than they used to. Meanwhile, Samuel Bernardi here battling with Nick Bader for what is P10 overall, P4 in Pro Am. And these guys behind it, Jared Kelly just in front of him, is giving the toe there to Bader. Bader getting back ahead. Bernardi's got the inside in towards turn number one. That's where you want to be. Bader tucks back in. And in at the end, Samuel Bernardi gets the move. Done. Car in the middle of the road, pointing the wrong way. That's Adam Ballard who's gone around for Rockefeller Esports Purple. So therefore, it's gone wrong for them. The P21 drives. He drops down P23, a lap down already, and that's going to hurt him even more. But Vidali there for succinct move, moves into P9, and it will get it timed absolutely right. As meanwhile, here we can see Mark Singal and what is Julia Jones as Jones tries to slice his way up the inside into turn six. Senegal, the AM leader right now, trying to hold on. But as they come down to breaking it into turn number eight, well, Jones has got all the run out the corner that's the biggest cut that you'll ever be asking for coming out of turn number eight with Senegal taking such a tight line Jones in the tire heading up towards top speed as they make the way on down towards turn number nine meanwhile off camera fastest lap of the race a 19.091 set by Jaden Calloway the P2 driver right now who's trying to chase down Tanner Dibble for the win of this race we'll have to see whether that comes to fruition he's got the time to chase it down if he carries on this momentum again the fact he just sliced three temps out of Dibble's lead off camera and well we will keep you apprised of that Mark Senegal roaring his way onwards towards turn at number one once for the Sunday GT Turtles driver with Jones getting on through and right now it looks so Jones a very comfortable P7 but he wants more Keith Wilfred's next target up the road and that's going to be two seconds from him to try and take on P2 in the prime class before the race is done but meanwhile, curving the way onto the start finish straight. Jason Landry up the inside of Cole Peterson there to gain P15. The Sunday GT Turtles drive is gradually recovering places. Franz Washington is the next driver, still three seconds up the road. He's gradually whittling down the gap to Shink. He's got a little bit of charm in front of him in the form of Holiday. And will Holiday being in P20 to be aware of the blue flags? But he also know he can't just make the car magic into thin air. And every steps aside with the blue flags going out of turn three. We'll call that man as meanwhile the Canadian Landry charges on. But uh, the head's on for a turn number five, a long way to go. And meanwhile, we do look to your race leader, Atana Dibble, as the DNA Motorsports driver makes his way down towards turn at number one and responds to Callaway by going three tenths fast on that previous lap. So Callaway back to two and a half seconds. It seems though these two drives are exchanging lap times like boxers exchanging blows, and nobody's going to land the knockout. But it looks like if this match goes to time in the boxing world, it's going to be Tanner Dibble who will be the winner, given the fact he's in at that lead up position. But meanwhile, and as our drivers continue to push on. A bit of drama here, and this is at turn at number nine. And that is Nick Yakubov, who's missing a rear wing. I think he's missing a few more parts. Goodness me, the camera angle there. Decepto, I thought that was Christopher Holiday about to clip the side of the 288 machine, but not to be. And Nick Yakubov has gone into that tyre barrier. I think he was involved in an incident with Matt Best and Aaron Beaver at that corner. Seems like the three drives came together, but Yakubov's got less car now compared to what many have. And as he makes his way into the pit lane, when well, he's a lap down at the moment, but I think that's going to be no more fast repairs for him, given he's coming already once 
to today and I think it's going to be a long pit stop and that may just put him out of contention for today but he'll try and get the car home to be classified as efficient and get some points on the board but meanwhile coming from the drama further down the order to further up the order as Aaron Beaver leaves the pit lane to look at my quarantine move window this on your TV screen is Edwin Offre who is third place overall and the third place pro driver as well making his way for turn number nine in towards turn number ten and will the priority in the Alpha Tori machine just looking to keep Milan Harris behind as long as he can with five minutes left here and these two right now well they've been nose to tail for some time they're not quite on the pace of the two leaders in fact now the gap to Callaway has opened up to the best part of 15 seconds we see a yellow flag being waved there by what is our start line man our start line marshal I should say and that was a yellow flag I believe for an instant a bit earlier on in the racing and indeed Barney flag waving at the flags he always does but meanwhile an offer and Harris three and a half times is the gap as we jump on board with the number 99 car looking back at Harris and well you just get a feel for how narrow it is going for that fountain set even though these Formula 4 cars are quite narrow themselves, it's never quite that comfortable when you're racing around here and you're pushing at speeds in excess of what is at 60 to 70 miles an hour at the slowest points and going upwards of 120 miles an hour at the fastest points. And we'll keep it at that here by this circuit flies by in a hurry. We're going its 1.96 mile length. And as the drives make the way down into turn number eight, well, right now Harris falling back, not quite the run he wanted through turn four through to eight, and therefore an offer able to open that gap up to 1.1 seconds, and the priority seems to be back in control of this battle for the time being as they head down in towards turn number nine. Meanwhile, we look back to Keith Wilfred and Julian Jones. This is the fight for P2 in Pro-Am. And Jones here looking on the inside into turn eight. He's going to go in on the brakes here. Jones really lunging to the inside, seeing the opportunity. And to be fair, Wilfred being quite compliant. They're seeing it coming. I think he's more concerned now about the face of Samuel Bernardi there. But the three Rockefeller eSports drivers, all from their respective sister teams, all trying to work around one another at the moment. And where it's going to be, what is Wilfred ahead of Bernardi still? Has been on foot behind. That's Charles Hosey. He's a lap down P20 and well Hosey will not want to interfere with the lead at lap battle between these drivers unless he wants to incur the wrath of the stewards and as they make the way on down the start for this trade well it's going to be Will Jones will be running away Wilfred and Bernardi fighting one over once again it's going to be Wilfred who defends to the inside for the curvature of the run down towards turn one Bernardi now is going to be on at the run in towards the inside of turn one itself but he hasn't really got the distant toe here he's going to try and go all the way for the overspeed under the braking zone Bernardi does exactly that does he get it stopped in time yes he does and well, as the car goes a little bit sideways there before coming in towards the fountain section, Samuel Bernardi tanks P3 in the prime class. And now, can he follow after Julian Jones and potentially find a way to climb back into P2 in the prime class? But all is said and done. Well, that will find out, but there's not long left to go. And meanwhile, Aaron Beaver here, a lap down on the leaders but right now chasing after Joe Nagy who's recently found his way past the M driver and he's the prime just going past your camera shot as they make the way up through the right hander turn number eight meanwhile our first 18 of the day Jaden Callaway sets an 18.882 the man is absolutely flying right now and in fact on that last lap he just took six attempts out of Tanner Dibble and you could see the damage that's done to Dibble's lead in fact the gap has almost been halved over the last couple that's back down to one and a half seconds with Callaway can keep this up he's going to need to pull it off once again on what is this lap ideally he's going to need to take at least seven attempts out on this lap if he does so he could have a chance on the final lap of race today we haven't got long left two minutes that means one more lap after this one in my maths is correct but meanwhile my goodness me what on earth has happened to your prime leader Fernando Takashi is on his roof on the start finish straight he's toes to the pits and well we look away for a while and we try to prevent the commentator's curse and it's come back to hit Takashi who's out of the lead of the prime class and with that suddenly Julian Jones is past and Keith Wilford and Samuel Bernardi it's only means he's in the lead of the prime class and Bernardi's right there once they make the way through car points in the wrong way that is I do believe the car of what was Aaron Beaver that was a lap down that should been towed to the pits out of turn number four but goodness me there's another late turn in the prime class and Bernardi right now is chasing Jones to the win here meanwhile your race leaders are going on to the final lap of racing Tanner Dibble has broken away from Callaway he's been involved in an instant of his own and has dropped to the best part of six seconds behind but meanwhile Tanner Dibble here has been involved in some sort of instant coming out of turn one he goes on to your final lap he is six seconds clear of Jaden Callaway who we see here in the rear picture so right now well we can't predict the future but Dibble looks to be in control but I've said that a minute a time before about other drives and it's gone very wrong but meanwhile we come back to the Bernardi Jones fight here for the prime win well they've got one more lap to contest this as they head into turn number 11 
And behind them by two and a half seconds is Keith Wolfrid, the third place prime driver. And with only 12 drivers now on the lead lap, as we see a little bit of a moment there for Keith Wolfrid coming out of the final corner. Power oversteer as they make the way down. I think those rear tyres on these cars now starting to show life signs where they're falling away. And well, as Bernardi roars his way up behind Jones, can he look for the move? He's done this many a time into turn one versus other drivers, but he can't. He hasn't got the speed to do it yet. He's going to stay incredibly close as they make the way through one into two. Into the fountain section they go. And was no real way for Anisha two by going into it as they make the way on out. Bernardi right now absolutely all over the back of his rival. But it looks as though Jones has got an answer to the pace of Bernardi or has he? As they're going to be very close coming in towards turn number six. It's going to be side by side under braking here. But ladies and gentlemen, we are going to need to look away just because your race leader has come out the final corner. And Tanner Dibble is going to go on to take the win in our second race today. Pro and overall ahead of Jaden Calloway by 2.4 seconds in the end for the ITD West and Edwin Offre will complete what will be your pro and overall podium P3. He's shaking from side to side. He's absolutely jubilant at what he's been able to do. Meanwhile, Milan Harris comes on through P4 just off the podium and in the battle between Jones and Bernardi, well, after they battled into turn six, Jones is still ahead. So we pick up that fight all the way to the end here as they come through the final corner. And as they do, Jones right now, I think he's done enough, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, he has as the ITD West driver ends his day on a win in the Prime Class P5 overall. Samuel Bernardi behind run-up in the Prime Class P6. Keith Wilfrid comes on through to round off the Prime Podium P7. And it'll be Mark Senegal who takes the AM winning race two for Sunday GT Turtles by a sizable advantage of 21 seconds. Nick Bader behind P9 ahead of Franz Oshink P10. Jason Landry recovers P11 in the end. And in your last lead lap finisher, runner-up in the Prime Class is going to be Carl Peterson for Caboose Crew who's seen every part of the grid today and indeed the running order but it's a nice end to his day after a dismal race one the 250 driver making a great recovery drive out to it and Todd Miller and finished a lap down has taken P3 in the AM class P13 but my goodness ladies and gentlemen if you wanted a thrilling race to wrap up your week this Friday well I think we've got two absolutely incredible races and completely unpredictable races I can tell you that and as Tanner Dibble for DNA Motorsports brings it on into the pit lane here to celebrate what is his win his first win of the season in the pro and overall classes as he does get a little bit camera shy there well most of the drivers into the pit lane Mark Senegal on his cool down lap here your am winner I don't think he's going to quite believe it either in terms of how all the races played out Long Beach has certainly set the tempo it has been a very aggressive and dramatic tempo we've had cars on their sides on their roofs we had suspensions absolutely smashed to bits but also we've had some absolute incredible racing and that is what middle of pack racing league is not all about it's completely unpredictable and that's why it's one of the finest series that you can find on the North American continent, indeed around the world. And today's season opener has demonstrated that in its entirety. But good it's be, ladies and gentlemen, as our final drivers come into the pit lane. And well, it's time for us to take you through those finishing positions subject to any stewards' inquiries. Jason Landry there doing some quick donuts in the pits for the fans. And we're also, I think, venting a little bit of frustration after what happened in the early stage of the race. We take a look to the scenic view and the results from race number two. So as we can see, after another 20 minutes of racing in race two of round one of the middle of the pack racing league, spring into F4 championship for 2024, sponsored by PG Actuator. Tanner Dibble, your winner for DNA Motorsports by 2.4 seconds over ITD West, Jaden Calloway. Edwin Offret rounding off the overall and pro podium, the privateer, a further what was in the end 10 seconds behind, but he's absolutely jubilant with that spot on the podium. And I would be as well, Milan Harris taking P4 just behind Frogfella Esports Red. And then ITD West, Julian Jones, P5 overall, your pro and winner. But he had to do it the hard way. He had to fend off the relentless onslaught and charge of Samuel Bernardi, your run-up in the Prime Class P6 for Rockefeller Esports Red. Rockefeller Esports Oranges at Keith Wilfred round off the Prime Podium of Jones Bernardi and Wilfred in P7. With Mark Senegal, your AM winner P8 for Sunday GT Turtles, and he'll be pleased with that. Nick made a P9 not on the Prime Podium, but he'll take that ninth place overall, and now it's a good result to wrap up his day, the Privateer. And then the Prototype of Franz Washing P10. And looked like he was on course for a little bit more, but that early race instant cost him dear, but a strong recovery drive to finish inside the top 10. Just outside the top 10, best of the rest P11. And Jason Landry for Sunday GT Turtles. And then Carl Peterson, your runner-up in the AM class. 
P12 overall for Caboose Crew, and he was your last lead lap finisher. Only 12 drive position on the lead lap, and then finishes a lap down. Your final podium finisher in the AM class, Todd Miller, who makes it back to back podiums on his debut today. A P2 in race one, a P3 in race number two, a P13 overall in this race for Caboose Crew. And well, it's a double podium for Caboose Crew. They're going to be absolutely ecstatic about that because that's a huge haul of teams' points early on in the season. Jared Kelly at P14, they're just missing out on the AM podium, but the privateer keeping his head up high, and definitely we can expect a few podiums from him this season, I reckon. With Joe at Nagy, P15 for Rockefeller Esports Orange completing your top 15. And the theme of lap down drivers continues with Fernando Takashi's late upturn of results and then overturning the results right at the end, costing him at Deer and down to P16 ahead of Charles Holsey and then at Matt Best, P18 ahead of Adam J. Ballard and Jordan Butlerfish. Two laps down, P20 there for DNA Motorsports. Also two laps down to Christopher, Holl Christopher Holiday, Jason Lynn, Aaron Beaver, Glenn Bratton and Nick Yakubov who rounds off your top 25. The Slipstream Sloths drive being followed up by the non-finishers as they finished six or more laps down or did not finish the race at all of what was there. Roger Ganesh, P26, had a Kevin Clark with Stacey Bertrand, P28. And we also did have the retirees, Braden Melling, Daniel McConnell and Logan McKinsey. And one unfortunate race for some, but for others, an absolutely stellar race. But that's the way the fortunes have gone in this season opener. And we've still got plenty more racing to come this season. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, it does mean it is now time for us to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have enjoyed the season open, perhaps you're sat there right now wanting to be on the grid for either this series or a future middle pack racing league series, or perhaps you just want to know a little bit more about the community and what goes on behind the scenes. Well, firstly, we definitely do recommend you join the official middle of the pack racing league discord. Very friendly discord one of the premier discords on the North American continent. But whether you are in North America, or alternatively, you're based elsewhere in the world, whether on the European continent or in Japan, or indeed in Australia, you're welcome regardless of where you come from. And the invite link is there on screen. But if you don't want to join the Discord today, perhaps you're a bit shy or more of a social media person, we do recommend you follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash MOP Racing. We can stay up to date with all the latest announcements regarding the Middle of the Pack Racing League series. And obviously you can stay up to date with the latest trials and tribulations of the official MOP Racing Esports teams. We would also like to take a moment to, say, to thank our title sponsor for this season, and that is, of course, PT Actuator. And, well... If you are looking for the pinnacle of racing and flight simulation experiences, PT Actuator are your go-to brand. With over a decade of experience at the forefront of actuator-based motion systems, PT Actuator's huge range of premium quality products are purpose-built to ensure you can experience a gold standard when simulating motion in your simulator. Whether you're looking for a simple one-dimensional freedom system or want to maximize your immersion for a six-dimensional of freedom system, PT Actuator have got you covered. But to find out about more about their range, do head to their website that's pt-actuator.com today for further details and that web address once again pt-actuator.com as you can see on screen but with that ladies and gentlemen attention now turns to round number two another two sprint races will be taking place next week and well round number two will be taking place at the chicago street circuit and well all the racing will occur at circuit side on what will be wednesday the 17th of april but tune in on sunday the 21st of april 2024 as as we bring you all the racing action as if it were live. And while the tempo has been set, there's been mixed fortunes for many, but can anybody across any of our three classes find a way to establish some consistency and make themselves an early favour after two rounds? Tune in then to find out how the story continues. But until then, we've been the middle of the pack racing league. I've been your host and commentator, Paul, TX1 for one Walsh, also known as Britain Spit, depending on what media you follow me on. And until next time, remember to stay safe, stay well, stay smiling, but most importantly, have a fantastic week weekend ahead and remember to stay on track. Good night.